We now learn how to use root factoring of quadratic functions to find the equation of a parabola, like the one we see here, when there's only one x-intercept. In other words, the curve only touches the x-axis in one point. Now we're going to do this with a couple of examples, and the first example is the one that we see here. We can see that we're given a parabola, which cuts the x-axis when x equals to 2, and cuts the y-axis when y equals to 8. And so we're asked to find this parabola's equation. So to do that, let me start by moving this to the side a little bit. There we go. And now we can get started. So since we know that this is a parabola, it must have an equation that can be written as y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. So our objective here is to find this equation. In other words, we need to find the values of a, b, and c. And to do that, we're going to use root factoring. Now, looking at this parabola here, remember, it touches the x-axis in one point only, and that's the point at which x equals to 2. When this happens, the theory behind root factoring allows us to state the following. This parabola's equation, y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, can be rewritten in the following way. y equals to a times x minus 2, all of which is squared. And this 2 inside these parentheses is the 2 at which the curve touches the x-axis. Writing the parabola's equation in this way is known as writing it in its root factored form. Now the advantage of doing this is that rather than having to find all three coefficients a, b, and c, all we have to do now is find the value of the coefficient a. And to do that, we need the coordinates of one other point through which this curve passes. The only other point that we're given in this case is the y-intercept, and that's this point here. And since the x-coordinate of any y-intercept is always 0, we can state that this point has coordinates 0, 8. And the fact that the parabola passes through that point allows us to state the following. When x equals to 0, y must equal to 8. And now to find the value of a, we're going to use the root factored form we have here, which I've boxed in green, and we're going to replace the x that we have here by 0, and the y that we have by 8. That would look like this. 8 equals to a times 0 minus 2 squared. That's 8 equals to a times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2 squared. And that's 8 equals to a times negative 2 squared, which is 4. So we have 8 equals to 4a. Finally, dividing both sides of this equation by 4, we have 8 over 4 equals to a. In other words, 2 equals to a, or simply a equals to 2 and we now have the value of the coefficient a. And now combining the root factored form that we have here with the value of a that we've just found, we can state that this parabola has equation y equals to 2 times x minus 2 squared. And that's the root factored form of this parabola's equation. But remember at the beginning, we said that we wanted to find this parabola's equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, to do that, all we need to do is open up these parentheses and distribute this 2. Doing so would look like this. This equals to 2 times, in parentheses, x squared minus 4x plus 4. And now distributing this 2 across the parentheses leads to the answer. y equals to 2x squared minus 8x plus 8. And we're done. We now have this parabola's equation. Let's look at another example in which the point that we're given isn't the y-intercept. Instead, it'll be some other point along the curve's length. Here we have a parabola, and we can see that it crosses the x-axis at 1, or we could say that it touches the x-axis when x equals to 1, and we can also see that it goes through the point with coordinates 4, 27. And let's say that we need to find this parabola's equation. Well, to do that, I'll start by moving this to the side, like so, and now we can get started. 
Since we're told that this is a parabola, we know that it must have an equation that can be written y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. So to find this parabola's equation, we need to find the values of the three coefficients a, b, and c. But using root factoring and the fact that this parabola crosses the x-axis when x equals to 1, we can rewrite this parabola's equation in the following way. We can state that this can be written as y equals to a times x minus 1 squared. And I'll just box that first result. Remember, I'm getting the 1 inside this parentheses here from the value of x at which the parabola touches the x-axis. Now, all we need to do is find the value of the coefficient a. And to do that, all we need are the coordinates of one other point through which the curve passes. Looking at the question, we are given the point 427. And the fact that this parabola passes through the point with coordinates 427 allows us to state the following. When x equals to 4, y must equal to 27. And now to find the value of a, we're going to replace the x we have inside our expression by 4, and we'll replace the y by 27, which are the coordinates of the point that we were given. Doing so would look like this. 27 equals to a times 4 minus 1 squared. That's 27 equals to a times 3 squared. That's 27 equals to a times 9. And now dividing both sides of this equation by 9 leads to 27 over 9 equals to a. That's 3 equals to a, or simply a equals to 3. And we now have the value of the coefficient a. And so combining the result we just found along with the root factored form that we have at the top, we can state that this parabola's equation can be written y equals to 3 times x minus 1 squared. And that's the root factored form of this parabola's equation. Now, since we wanted to find this parabola's equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, all we need to do here is open up these parentheses and distribute this 3. And that would lead to the following. That's equal to 3 times, in parentheses, x squared minus 2x plus 1. And now distributing this 3 across the parentheses leads to the final answer, y equals to 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. And that's our final answer. We now have this parabola's equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And that's how to use root factoring to find a parabola's equation that only has one x-intercept. And that's it for this tutorial.